Good afternoon, this is Paul Harris for Kitco News at the BMO Global Metals and Mining Conference. I'm joined here this afternoon with Clive Johnson, President and CEO of B2Gold. Good afternoon, Clive. Great, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Likewise. It's, um, B2 has posted some of the, the, the most best and most profitable growth of any company in recent years. Um, you'll be a million ounce gold producer at some point this year and your stock's at an all-time high. Things are growing great for B2 Gold. Yeah, it's great. Obviously, renewed interest in the gold sector, the gold price is higher, but it's not just about that for us. You know, we've established ourselves, we started B2 Gold 12 years ago at zero. A bunch of us uh, started it as founders and we've been able to grow it consistently in many different countries in the world as a successful, responsible gold producer. Now, uh, basically, as you said, we expect to be a million ounces this year and also very profitable. We're looking at all in sustaining costs that are around $800 an ounce. So we're making a lot of money, paying down debt rapidly. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a nice time for us. We feel like we've earned this because we did a lot of heavy lifting five, you know, the last five or six years when most companies weren't building gold mines, shareholders were too upset with everyone. So uh, we, we had a contrarian view, build mines when it's unpopular. And, uh, so. I think it'd be fair to say you've also got a very unique approach of building mines, engaging with companies, or oh, sorry, governments. Um, ESG, or what we now talk about as ESG, has been a part of the company's DNA for a long time, and I think perhaps a, a very recent example of that is the, the Rhino uh, the Rhino Gold Bars that you've, you've recently launched. Yeah, that's right. We really pride ourselves in the B2 Gold years. And before that, we were uh, I was one of the founders of a company called Bima Gold, which was another successful company, worldwide producer. Um, but we, we've always believed in the mining industry, you have to be responsible. And it wasn't always that way back in the day in the, in the mining industry. So we think we're uh, one of the companies on the cutting edge of, of, of showing our commitment to CSR, corporate social responsibility, and also ESG, making sure we're environmentally responsible. A couple of things we're doing there, we, we built uh, one solar plant in uh, Namibia, <coughs> which has been a great success, a combined heavy fuel oil solar plant, uh, and it's been very profitable as well. And now we're building a much bigger one in, in Mali, near the Fakola mine, which should be the largest hybrid solar and HFO plant uh, in the world. And it's going, to be, it's going to be very good for the environment, and also it, it's, uh, it's a profitable um, exercise as well. In addition, you mentioned the Rhino Gold Bars. We've just recently, in the last month, launched the Rhino Gold Bar in, uh, in Namibia and uh, also launched it in Ndaba in Cape Town. And what that means is we, we, we found a way, a very creative way of, of, of um, combining uh, conservation with philanthropy. So we took a, a thousand ounces of gold from the Ojikoto mine in Namibia and we donated that to the Save the Rhino Trust, Save the Black Rhino Trust. The only place in the world where they roam free is in northern um, is in northern Namibia, and they've been really threatened by poaching. So I got involved personally a couple of years ago on this. But someone came up with a brilliant idea to take a thousand ounces of gold, donate it, and make gold bars out of them to, for sale. So the gold bars are uh, one ounce and a half ounce gold bars. They're beautiful bars with a rhino on it. And we charge spot price plus a 15% premium, which is the conservation premium. To ensure this goes on forever, we'll make more coins and so more That 15% bar. goes into the conservation fund. It keeps, keeps going, keeps going. So this doesn't only help save the rhino, this helps the communities that work to save the rhino, and also tourism and all those other things. So it's a really, really cool way, I think, of combining um, you know, a, a, a philanthropy and a, and a really good uh, conservation plan as well. And so far, it's been really popular. We're going to be, the bars will be sold on Kitco. I'll plug you guys <laughs> uh, soon. And uh, it's a really great way to give back. You know, we're taking gold that was deposited six billion years ago in Namibia, and we're using it to save an animal that's been roaming the planet for 50 million years. So there's a real prehistoric element to the whole thing, and it's really caught on with people. And I think it sounds like a really good way to sort of deepen the engagement that um, mining companies are often criticized for not being deep enough and uh, showing additional value for having mining operations. Absolutely, and you know, for, for us, it, it, frankly, it just comes down to it's the right thing to do. And it's always been the right thing to do. We, we were doing it back way back in the Bima days in Russia and elsewhere, Chile, Russia, all the other countries we were in, before it had fancy titles, like you know, CSR and ESG. And that, that's just part of our corporate culture, and as you said, it's in our DNA. Everybody should win in what we're doing, and unless we're gonna go and live in caves again, we do need mines, but they can be run very responsibly. Another thing we do is we don't use a lot of consultants or contractors, we want accountability. So the 6,000 employees in the company, they, they, the vast majority work directly for B2 Gold because we want to make sure they're treated well, they're paid well, they're safe, and all those other things. So it's a very much a, um, it's about accountability. Fairness, respect, uh, and accountability is what we, uh, we, we aspire to. Okay. You mentioned a moment ago that you have a, an all-in sustaining cost of about $800 per ounce. Um, so we go approaching 1675 um, it's you know, big fat margins. How important is it for gold producers to have fat margins for a while? 
Well, I think it would be nice for the long-suffering shareholders, and unfortunately the shareholders, if you go back and look at the reality in the last 10 years, the shareholders haven't suffered because of the gold price. They've, to be honest, unfortunately it's true, by, by some very bad management. Bad acquisitions, bad construction, bad, bad production. Not everyone, but unfortunately too many in the industry. There's been billions and billions of dollars lost in the last 10 or 15 years, not because of the gold price. You know, if you bought gold 10 years ago, you'd be up around 50%, maybe 60% now today. If you bought the gold index, you're up only 43%. Of course, if you bought Beach of Gold, you're up 300% over the 10 years. Uh, we're a bit of an outlier in terms of our extremely good performance. But, it, but it's a tough business. It takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of hard work. And you've got to be, um, you, you've got to really go out there and try and represent what's in the best interest of your shareholders and taking care at the same time of all these communities that we're in. So, you know, we're proud of what we've accomplished. Yes, you're right. We're, we didn't need gold to go higher to be a profitable company. Uh, uh, we were doing very, very well. But we, for example, we're projecting cash from operations gross profits consolidated for B2 Gold this year with a million ounce of production. We're projecting $700 million. Um, that's at $1,500 gold. Every $100 gold goes up is another $90 million per year of, of gross profits to us. So we'll be, de we'll be debt free by the third quarter this year based on our current projections. We started paying a dividend late last year. So we're on a great roll. And, uh, you know, we like to think we've earned this because we did a lot of the heavy lifting, uh, as I mentioned earlier, when it wasn't very positive to build gold mines. So. Um, but we're not going to we're not going to let the gold price go to our heads. I think people really have to make sure they don't do that. Don't start making acquisitions based on today's gold price. We never have. We never will. Uh, show some discipline in terms of how to grow the company. As, as B2 matures, are you starting to, and with the dividend, the initial dividend coming, are you starting to attract a, a different kind of investor, a more generalist investor, a more sort of value-oriented investor? Well, I think we are. We're getting a lot of the gold funds who are really desperate for success stories, and there's a few. But we're one of the very few. Hopefully, there'll be more. Um, but sure, but with the idea for the generalist funds, we're trying to say to them, look, even though we're gold miners, we're, pretty, we're actually good at running a business. <laughs> Uh, one of my criticisms and aspects of the sector in the past is they haven't been run sometimes like businesses. And at the end of the day, we're trying to show the generals that we're very good at what we do, finding gold, building gold mines, being profitable, being responsible uh, in every way, and just trying to encourage them to see that a company like ours can continue to thrive. You know, we do have a couple of good things in our pipeline right now. We've got the Gramalate project in Colombia. Uh, we have a 50-50 joint venture with Anglo Gold Ashanti. We're the operator. And uh, we're taking it to final feasibility at the end of the year. It's got the potential to be a low-cost open pit gold mine. We're going to know very soon. So that could be, you know, depending on the feasibility study, if it's as positive as we're hoping, we could be making a decision to go ahead with that uh, early next year. And then we have some tremendous exploration um, projects and results from 20 kilometers north of Fakola, an area we call Anaconda. So we're looking for another Fakola. Uh, and it's early days, but we've had some really good drill intercepts that suggest we might be onto something else. So when you have those things in the pipeline, we're not rushing around looking to take over other gold mining companies, because frankly, you know, the competition is getting more and more intense. We're not going to start overpaying. We never have. We're not going to do it now. Well, B2, I think you'd agree with, it's been built on very shrewd acquisitions and then really building with your internal team, really generating the value that way. Um, you've arguably got one of the best mine building teams in the industry. It's currently at work, I believe, uh, doing expansion in uh, in Africa. And then, will it be Gramalotti the next up uh, to bat for them? Yeah, we'll see. Uh, obviously, we've got more work to do, but it looks it looks encouraging, and we're doing some infill drilling right now. If that holds together, then you know we'll look at it late in the year. And uh, we liked it at 1350 gold. We thought it had the potential to become a good mine. So obviously, at higher gold prices, that's more more attractive. We'll have a look at that. But you're right, we. We, we've always built our own minds. We try and do as much, as much as we can ourselves. It's about accountability. And that's why, why we're so successful. It's the same team of guys going around the world building the next mine together. And they, 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 they work so well together. And frankly, they spend the money as if it was their own. And, and uh, also, we have one of the best exploration teams in the world of gold. So we, t we don't pay for ounces that might be there. We never will. But we've had great exploration success at each of our projects. You know, when we acquired for COLA, Accretively, it was about four million ounces in resources. Now it's more like eight million. So, so a great acquisition for what it was then. A tremendous acquisition by adding value with the drill bit. That's something else we're very good at exploration. So. Do you see there's an, an optimal number of assets, an optimal number of mines to have? I mean, I guess with the uh, divestiture of the mines in Nicaragua, you've shown you're not averse to getting rid of things that n no longer fit the, the, the profile. So but is there a uh, an optimal number of mines to have? I don't really look at it that way per se, I suppose. I mean, right now we have the three core mines now. So we've got Masbati in the Philippines, Ujikoto in Namibia, 
and for cola in Mali, and that accounts for our uh, estimate of basically a million ounces of gold a year. And that, that'll go for several years, those three good mines. The Nicaraguan assets, I think it was a really, um, a really smart deal that benefited everyone. Our Nicaraguan employees, we care about them a lot. They, we vended our interest in those two mines to Caliber Mining. Caliber Mining was an exploration company uh, in Nicaragua. So all of our employees uh, you know, kept their jobs. They moved over to Caliber. Everyone's happy. We own 34% of Caliber, which we're happy with. We didn't want to exit Nicaragua per se, but we wanted to let a new group focus on the Nicaraguan assets. And these are good guys. They're, they're, I think they're going to do a good job running the, running the company. It's still got 30, 35% of kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I think it was also, I guess, a sign of as we've grown so dramatically, it's a sign of the market, I guess, that we're always, you know, we've, we're maturing to the point where you don't hang on to everything you've got. You know, you make these decisions based on what's in the best industry of your show is moving forward. So now we're looking at, you know, our newest mines have become bigger mines than the Nicaragua ones. It was a sensible thing to do, but rather than just a fire sale, we didn't want to do that. We were interested in keeping an interest. So quite an elegant deal, actually. Okay, so if, if everything goes to plan this year, where will B2 Gold be by the end of the year? Well, we'll be, we will have, this year we came just under 985,000 ounces a year, last year rather, 19. This year we expect to be over a million, just over a million ounces a year. And I mentioned all in sustaining costs somewhere around $800 an ounce. Paying down debt dramatically um, the second half of the year. We'll see where the gold price goes and what, what we're doing. We might look at potentially increasing the dividend. I'm not prepared to promise that yet. But we want to be a company that pays a, a dividend to our shareholders, but also can take the money, hard earned money we make from producing gold to find more gold mines ultimately a build more gold mines as well. Thank you, Clive. Pleasure. And thank you for watching and stay tuned to kitco.com for more from the BMO Global Metals and Mining Conference.